Here we have this tiny robot actuator from Robotus. This is a Dynamic Cell XC330 robot actuator. They have three pins here, one on each side, that allows you to communicate with multiple robot actuators that you can daisy chain together with one of these cables that look like this. I'll show you how to set everything up and get one of these guys up and running in Python. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel. I also have a master's robotics and AI bundle as well as the robotics project bundle at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So this right here is the actuator we talked about. The full name is actually XC330-M288-T. So you can take a look here really inside of these actuators that we saw earlier is really a lot of different components in this. So it's a robot actuator because we have a motor inside. We also have a gearbox and we also have another motor controller and encoder to read the position of the motor. So all of this is packed into this tiny body here. So we can see these are some of the specs for this actuator. We see that we have a position sensor, a 12-bit encoder. The motor is a coreless DC. We have a baud rate that could go between 9,600 to 4 megabits per second. It uses PID control loop. The resolution is 4,096 pulses per revolution. We have a lot of different operating modes. We have current control, velocity position, extended position, current base position, and PWM control. It's super light, it's only 23 grams, and we saw the size earlier. Some things about the gear ratio, you see it's almost 300 at 288.35. The torque, it goes up to 0.93 for stall at about 1.8 amps. At no load speed, we're looking at 81 revolutions per minute, and we're looking at five volts. The input voltage should be between 3.7 and six, so that's why you saw me have this board earlier. I'll talk about it later on, but that's basically to step down your voltage to the desired voltage. And you see the physical communication with the cables that we saw earlier, these guys here, this is for the TLL communication. And we can set the IDs between zero and 252, so you could have a bunch of them daisy chained. And here you can see the actual pin now, we have ground, the positive, and then the data is gonna be a third pin. On the right side, it's gonna be the flipped version of the left side. And here we see the working principle for the TTL communication. It goes between zero and five volts and uses zero and one bits to encode the data. Here you can see these are some options for the actual um, device that you need to use to connect to your PC. So you either use the OpenRB-150 or a U2D2. The one I have right here is more of a custom one that I got from um, Westwood Robotics because I'll be building a robot hand later on. But basically it uses this similar um, chip that we see here to do the USB communication. So main idea is you have a PC here on the left. You're gonna get a USB cable A to C. It's gonna connect to here. And then it's going to go to one of your actuators that we see on the right. This right here would be some power that you're going to be using to power your actuator. In my case, I'm using this board. Um, this is going to step down the power from anywhere between, I think it was like 20 to 30, but basically I'm using 24 volts right now and then it's stepping it down to 5 volts that come into this actuator here. And we're gonna be showing you how to set it up in the Dynamic Cell Wizard 2.0 here. So let's go ahead and jump into that. If you're looking to get your parts 3D printed but don't have access to a 3D printer, make sure to check out PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. Just come here to CNC 3D printing, choose 3D printing. Go ahead and drop your STL parts here, choose the quantity, material, color, process, and all these other properties that you need to fill out. And then come up here to the right and submit your part for review. Check out link below for discounts. All right, so just come over here to Dynamic Cell Wizard 2.0 and then go to software downloads. I'm gonna be choosing Windows here. So after you install it, it's going to look like this. I'll leave a link in the video description. Just come here to scan and this will scan all your devices. So after it finishes scanning, you can see that we have found our device here. There's a couple of things you might need to do for your first time is you wanna make sure you select your port to scan here, which I selected to be COM3 USB serial port. I have protocols one and two both selected and the baud rate I'm choosing is the 57,600 BPS. If you have one that's set higher, you could make sure to check that. 
the IDs, I'm going to have 0 to 7. You could choose whatever range is appropriate. But when you set the IDs, this part is going to be a little bit tricky, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But for now, I'm setting to 0 and 7. I've already set the IDs for this one specifically, which you can see here we have set as 6. So one thing to note here is that to set the ID, you would come up here. So you can see this is showing ID. You would choose the ID you want here. So you can see this is part that's a little bit confusing. You see that there's only IDs 8, 9, and then all the way to 200 something that's available. And the reason is because right now I have many USB devices connected and it thinks that the ID 0 to 7 is being claimed. So the only ones that's going to be available is going to be the ones that's not claimed. So that's one thing you might have to play around with. One way to get around it is maybe you could, you could try scanning, say, only to... Um, only the one that your ID is set to, to if you want to be able to set it to another one. So for example, because I already know my ID is six, then if I set like six to six, for example, and I try scanning it, I should only find my number six, which you see here. And because I did that, you can see all the other IDs are actually available. So that's kind of a hack if you want to make sure you can scan uh, multiple IDs. So once you have an ID situated, if you want to start controlling it, you would come up here to toggle this torque right here. So once you toggle it, you will start to activate it. And you can see you could have different things you can set. You can set the gains here if you want to play with the gains. Um, but what we're going to do is you can see we have like goal current, goal velocity. You could have a uh, goal position. So this this one I'll try first. So. If you look right here, you can see I could set a desired position. So for example, if I set minus 90 plus 90, you can see I could uh, make it move in different directions. There's also options to control it in different modes here. So for example, we have a current base position. If we toggle the torque again, you can set the different values and you should be able to see the motor move. And you can see it's very responsive. If I set a bigger number, then you'll see it keep rotating. Now, if you want to control in velocity, you could have a goal velocity here, for example. So I'm going to turn the torque on again. And you can see I could ramp up this velocity. You see it's starting to move. Basically, the max speed is going to be 350, which is quite fast for such a high gearbox. And you could reverse the direction. So yeah, it's pretty pretty good, pretty responsive. And for what kind of application you need for such a small motor, this is plenty fast for what you need to do. So to get your code up and running in Python, make sure to get the Dynamic Cell SDK GitHub. Go ahead and git clone it, cd into it, pip install dot, and then pip show to verify the installation. This is a sample script I have for read and writing one actuator. So from Dynamic Cell SDK import star, here we have some port that we're handling for COM3, do some error checking, and then set the baud rate. Once you do that, we have our ID set to 6, which is this current one that I'm using here. You can see I labeled this 6. It's a good idea to label these if you have more than one so you don't get confused. And here we have the torque on address, 64, data is 1. These are just some uh, default settings that we, we have for this actuator that you could look up in their data sheet. But here you can see we're calling the right one byte txrx, and then we have a get to read the position. To pass this in, we have the port handler, the ID, the torque on address, and the actual data that we're sending it. And then basically we have it in a while loop. We're gonna keep trying and then do some error checking. And we have a goal position that we're gonna be printing out here. And right here, we have another current position that we're printing out. So. It's going to keep asking a user for new numbers and then try to send the new command and then read the position. So inside here, you can see we could, in the terminal, we could set our desired position here. So for example, if I hit zero, it's currently at zero. And if I do 1000, you can see it moved. If I go back to zero again, you can see it's turning. So yeah, that's pretty much how you get it up running in Python. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.